Hey, welcome to t- Tell Me About It. And this is uh, Brian Allen, the singer for Vicious Rumors and a good friend of mine for a long time. And uh, how are you doing, Hello. Brian? Uh, I'm all right. This is yeah. off work. <laughs> I've known you since you were wearing a coonskin cap after Actually, you got was, out of the army. It, it, it was a silver fox. Oh, silver, sorry. That's yeah, actually silver fox. <laughs> it's that way. Comes from me in my sleep. So, you know, you were with, uh, what was that band? Uh, Budstone with Ben and Lance. Oh, yeah, Ben and Lance. Yeah, that was, God, when was that? That was 90. About 93, because me and Debbie would three, come out 94? to your house. That's when yeah. uh, Ben freaked out <laughs> and called the paramedics because <laughs> he got too stoned. And yeah, he had a stone. pot growing oh. underneath the house. <laughs> yeah, he was something else, man. He would freak Lance and I out bad, you know, because he would get so high and he wouldn't come out of the bathtub. He used to do <laughs> he did that to the testament guys. When he was, he was roadie and when he roadied for testament, I mean, God, I remember talking to uh, Chuck and Eric and Greg about that. They're like, oh my God, we, he, he would freak out. We, he wouldn't come out of the bathtub. <laughs> I, he was a drummer in my band, Evil Genius, with Ken ben, uh, Ken Goldstein and Kip. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Did he do that with you guys? Yeah, we recorded the whole Dr. Mastermind album as, as no, Evil like, Genius. Did he, get, did he get really stoned and like freak no. out? No, he worked all the time. Hmm. And Ken lived in a room upstairs and <laughs> all the flies went to his room. There was like a family <laughs> of flies that would swirl around in his room trying to avoid yeah. the, the fly tape. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, then we were in a band, we had British Steel, the Jewish Free Street. Yeah, and that was fun. You kept asking me, Maddie, if you ever know of a band that is a singer. And so when uh, Jeff, I talked to Jeff Thorpe in 2009, they said, oh, I called him up to see how the gig was like with uh, Neil Turman's band, this festival. Oh, is that when you were, uh, did uh, Headbangers Open Air? Yeah, but it was after that. It, they uh, played a festival. Uh, do you know Dirk Harmon? In Germany, sounds familiar. Sounds familiar. He lives in Lübeck, it's between Hamburg and Berlin. He has a tattoo shop. It sounds familiar. You, I'm sure you met him, but yeah. he put he put him and Carl from a band called Stone Cold Black Thrash Band, and yeah. uh, they put on a festival of the Light Tower, the Light Tower Fest. I guess something happened with the singer, and then they said, "I know a guy that can sing just like the guy you're trying to replace all the time." And that was you. And he said, oh, I don't, I doubt it. And I said, give me your email. I'll send you a bunch of links to watch the videos. If you think so, call me back. And he called me back like in 20 minutes ago. Uh, Matt, yeah, can I get that number? <laughs> <laughs> I knew he would because, well, who else screams well, that was, like you do? That was like at the same time I was uh, when I was doing shit with uh, Jay and Mick with Malice. 2009? Yeah, but we only did one show. Yeah, like Keep It True? No, we did uh, oh, in that, Paladinos in North Hollywood. Yeah, that was a it, it, Yeah, yeah that, that was their 20-year uh, uh, reu- uh, anniversary, reunion anniversary. But I guess uh, what happened is Jay told me that uh, James didn't want to do it or something to that effect because I guess there's still bad blood. And then Jay goes you want to do it? I'm like, oh, fuck yeah. I was like, his malice was like one of my favorite bands when I was younger, you know? Yeah. James, you know, at the Ravers, my first record album, Jay was on that and he brought Mick and he brought James Neal and Paul Kearney. And it was a, the release party was <laughs> at this house. Yeah. <laughs> and there's these guys from Tower of Power and the, the guy who ran the label was, he helped, he started Arista. And yeah. There's all these guys in suits and Kenny G was there. I was the only rock and roll band on the label. And, you know, James gets really drunk on one beer. I've told this story so many times. <laughs> and, I've heard so many crazy drunk stories about James. Or I, I guess he passed out in the field with just cowboy boots on. 
<laughs> somewhere in Germany. I don't know. Oh, I can't remember. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know the story. And it's like this one. He drank this KB lager, went out in the bathroom. Uh-huh. The party was at a studio by PCC Sylvania. And he uh-huh. went in the backyard, was gone for like 20 minutes. And uh, he came back in, totally stark naked, covered in this brown <laughs> stuff. And I said, my best Keith Boone voice, oh, dear boy, w- what is that odor? It's so natural. <laughs> and he said, I took a shit and rolled in it. He's totally oh naked. Oh, my God. And we're in the kitchen. And he <laughs> opens up his fridge, grabs another beer, drinks the whole beer. And Mick was just looking at him like he was freaked out. And uh, Poor Mick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it, James took off and ran down the street, like, towards, you know, I-5. So Paul Kearney went after him in his car. He said he couldn't get the smell out of that car. He sold it and it still smelled like shit years later. So oh Mick, didn't, God. Mick didn't, he said, I don't want to have anything to do with that guy. And uh, so <laughs> it was right about the time that me, me and Jay and Kip met Dean at Eli's. Yeah. And, and then we did the Malice demo with, with that's how he, with Dean. And Pete Lofton also the second, we did, we did it twice, but, mm-hmm. um, Mick didn't want to join until he, until we got to deal with Metal Blade. I, you know, yeah. I, I was never going to be in a band. In fact, the Jay is asleep, like right where I'm standing <laughs> in this basement, my mom's famous basement. I'm that guy. I, yeah. I live in my mom's basement. <laughs> my my oh. mate, like 30 albums here. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So in Europe, they were on tour with Slayer. Mouse. Yeah. And I think that was the tour where uh, they were throwing bottles of piss at him and shit like that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that. That's but. what Jay and Mick told me. They said it, it, the Slayer crowds were like <laughs> flipping the fuck out, going, boo, fuck oh. you, and throwing bottles of piss and shit at him and, and so, stuff like that. We played with guess, Slayer and they they hated us too. And uh, in fact, that's a gig in Seattle where I grabbed a chick by a hair, pulled her up to the stage, and full on. Smash her in the face. I didn't realize it did until I saw the video, but uh <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Lance has got a video of me when back in the British Steel days where I, I pulled somebody up on stage because they they kept hitting, like trying to grab the chains because they used to wear the Rob Halford chains. And he was grabbing them, almost knocked me off the stage in Mount Tabor, and we were being filmed that night. And I just grabbed the dude by the shirt and I had all these rings on and I was just beating the shit out of him right in the front row. And Lance still has the video of it. And he, he says, you can see the dude's lips just shaking. He's like, you're <laughs> fucking that guy up. And he goes, well, he says, I guess we're going to get sued on that one. <laughs> you can't sue people that have no money. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, Kerry King and uh, Tom, Got him really drunk on beer and uh, told him you're, you're an opposer. Yeah, they, they got, got James, James drunk. drunk. Yeah, and said you're an opposer band. You suck. And <laughs> James went and threw his clothes at the road manager and took off and ended up at a sheep field naked. Yeah, that's the story they told me about. Yeah, yeah. Jay, the way Jay tells it, it's like a dragnet episode. He, but he tells him uh, he told me about well, you being Mayeth and it was like he uh, made been crazy but my my god he was fucking amazing singer oh yeah me and mick just used to jam amazing a long time ago he's all he's always been that way they used to lure him down in a cage yeah like an animal yeah they, they showed me some <laughs> old videos of the of that but <laughs> But let's yeah. get back to you because I'm tired, kind of tired of talking about malice all the time. Well, I know, but they're so awesome. You know, I don't care. We can I, talk I'll about malice you. all day. <laughs> My skin you has know? never been prettier since I've used the, the James Neal brownstone lotion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, look, I'm skinny. I'm all bones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Can you see? laughs> yeah. So, so you joined Vicious Rumors. You made, uh, did a tour with them. You did like five world tours. You made, what, two albums with them and a live album? Oh, God, I think I did more tours than that. I've done a lot of tours with them between, well, between 2009 and and, and now, you know, I've been off and on with them. Hey, there's a burn on my screen. (laughs) Yeah, she likes to photo bomb or video bomb. (laughs) 
it's usually a cat. Usually a cat. Have you seen the video of Madison Avenue? Well, she, she's ever? a bitch, man. I mean, <laughs> she just we we rescued this bird, and she just she had she's oh my god, she has to constantly be around you, or she freaks the fuck out. That's pretty cool. That's really cool. It tells you can have her. You no, her? I no, I, I don't. We it's just got a Demi just got a cat. I love that cat. I made I made him talk. <laughs> Yeah, none, of the, none of the cats mess with him or her or whatever. <laughs> no, no, that's got to be. Stop that. But um, after uh, Vicious Rumors, you, how many, what albums did you sing on that one with them? I did. I've done two studios, one live with some bonus tracks. I did uh, Razorback Killers, Electric Punishment, Live You to Death. There's, there's, um, and then, um, when I came back, we did a DVD at the Bang Your Head Festival. So, yeah, and Jeff's wanting to do another album, I think, next year is what he's talking about. There, there's no way. I, I, maybe you might do it at the end of this year. No, that's right. We got a new year now. It's January. Yeah, he's talking. We won't be able to do anything until after, after June because we're just completely busy. Oh, hey, it's better than sitting around. Yeah, because <laughs> we're going out with Raven on the 27th, I think. Yeah. March. Yeah. Because you'll be up and, in Portland April uh, 9th or something like that. Yeah, at the Hoffman, which I was kind of shocked about. I, I I figured it would be a smaller venue, but... Well, the last I, time I, I played the Hawthorne, they played in the in the bar. Oh, really? And so did Anvil. Oh, really? Not together, but two different shows. Why uh, there was a rap show going on in the big hall. Oh. That was sold God, out, so they put them in the God, bar. I hope they don't do that to us, because that'll <laughs> fucking suck. Yeah, I thought a lot of room. John said it was great, but John's John Gallagher is the coolest guy. Do you, do you Have you met them? I have never met any of the guys oh, from Raven. He is yeah. my, my best friend from music ever. We played with Anthrax and Raven at the at the Starry Night and Wild Dogs in 1984, and we are at the uh, key, uh, the Mexican place behind it. And he oh, was Cisco's there. and Ponchos. Yeah, and John yeah. said, "Hey, man, what's good to drink here?" And John Donnelly had just made up a oh. joke, <laughs> and he said, "Oh, you want to? I want to start a bar and and call it Bunch of Booze." And so he said. Oh. Oh, a bunch of booze is the best drink they have. And so he said, all right, I'll have one of those. And <laughs> and we went back over to the, uh, the Starry Night, and he said, mm -hmm. i got to go to the bathroom. I, I showed him where that is. And, you know, it had they have doors on the sit-downs. So he walks and goes in there, and I thought, I can always poop. So we sat down, <laughs> and we kept talking the whole time we were sitting there. And I thought, this guy's going to be my friend for life. And, yeah. He's a, him and his brother are the coolest guys you'll ever meet. They're both brothers. Yeah, I, oh, I, I didn't know that. I yeah, didn't know that. I joke with him. I said, "Oh yeah, you know, I just love Wonderwall That's because o Oasis. the The two brothers are Gallagher brothers. I just I didn't even know they were brothers. I thought they were just, you know. I guess I didn't even put two and two together. Shit, man! <laughs> they started in seventy four. Yeah. They've been together. Been doing that since 1974. Well, I remember when that movie uh, Trick or Treat came out uh, with Skippy from Family Ties and they were showing all the metal posters and stuff. He, I think there was a, a Raven album on that movie. Huh. And I was like, oh, fuck. It was like Lizzie Borden. There was Raven. He had, I think he had a picture of D. Snyder on the wall. That movie is just brilliant. And of course, Fast Way did the whole goddamn soundtrack. Man, I interviewed Passway in 82 when they're here with Iron Maiden and Dave King, the singer. I, somebody, oh, I, I love him. The, uh, love him. Yeah, I love that band. I love Fast Eddie. That, that was, that's another great Joseph! bunch of people. <laughs> and, uh, um, I love that song. The photographer that was with me had a Wild Dogs t shirt on, and Dave King goes, Oh, yeah. Wild Dogs. Oh, I hear, I've read about them in Kerrang. They're fish. And he goes, Well, the guy interviewing you is the singer. Mm -hmm. Really? <laughs> yeah. 
that's the only way, didn't even know. That's the only way I could afford to go to shows was, you know, interviewing and I wrote for like Metal Forces and a whole bunch of magazines. Yeah. And, oh, man. Yeah. Then the drummer was a uh, Humble Pie drummer, Jerry Shirley. And I oh, love really? Humble Pie. And Fast Eddie from Motorhead. Oh, God. That was it. They got us so drunk before we went to interview Saxon, which was kind of boring. They had a big mm-hmm. tea urn. <laughs> and we were late. So was Saxon late. was boring because yeah. man, uh, they were hilarious. I, I, I partied with them in, uh, when they came here with Priest some years ago. In fact, it was funny. I got a phone call. I just got off a tour, and it's their sound guy, Jackie. And he's like, Brian, where are, where are you? I'm like, I'm at home. He goes, well, I know, but you said you were going to pick us up. I'm like, oh, fuck. And I completely <laughs> forgot. <laughs> so I, That's I not surprising. And I go flying down to Portland. I go pick up uh, Biff and Nigel and Jackie. And, uh, God, I can't remember who else. A couple of the other guys. Um, fit him in my car because they wanted to go to this, some Indian restaurant. And... And Biff was just kind of looking like, fashion to be late, you know, just kind of <laughs> fucking with me. <laughs> but no, they were a lot of fun. We, I took them to uh, the West India Company, that Indian restaurant in downtown on Broadway. Uh, I've really been fucking, there. oh, it's so good. Yeah. But they had a good time. Only time I'm eating uh, Indian food was when I was in Amsterdam with the Mentors guys. And we went to a, a restaurant. <laughs> They they let them in there. <laughs> oh yeah, and you know in the, in Europe you you sit you don't sit by yourself. There's all these people that will join your table, and the guy that sat with us was DeBarge's manager. DeBarge? Yeah. Oh my god, how funny is that? He, he said, "I'm going to Germany to uh, it's wrap, a up, the night. <laughs> <laughs> wrap up a record deal," and I thought I'd stop here first. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, the mentors just quit. They just ended a big world tour. They were going all kinds of places with, like, you know, Avia at the end of their <laughs> Czechoslovakia and all the <laughs> all the strange places, along with the yeah. UK. And, yeah, it was really a long tour. Bird but, is driving me crazy. So, so you're with us, just rumors, and then... Mm-hmm. Then uh, you, they were going to do the, I remember this because you worked at PCC too, and they're uh-huh. going to do a U.S. tour, and you didn't want to do that because there would only be 20 people at the gigs. And No, it was, it was the, what it was is I couldn't get the time off of work. Yeah. And, and I was like, you know, and at that time, my kids were really young. And I told Jeff and Larry, he's like, dude, I can't, I can't afford it. I, I you know, I got three daughters, you know, I got to have insurance for my kids, you know? And, um, so yeah, that was, and then they got, um, some Dutch kid by the name, uh, name of Nick Hollerman. The bond um, guy. Yeah. Really yeah. great. He's a good singer. Nice guy. He's such a nice guy. He was a kid practically back then, but now he's all he's practically all grown up now. I think he's almost in his thirties now. But yeah, he, he's a he's a good singer. He reminds me of uh, Tobias from Ed Guy a lot. You know, good singer. And then, uh, so, and I didn't really do much because then I was in that car accident. And I yeah. had back surgery, and yeah. that 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 fucked me up bad. Yeah, so I, I was the pictures much- in the hospital because you said <laughs> I was blacking out, and then you ended up you were bleeding on the inside. Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, I was pretty fucked up. But um, and then I when I got back on the horse again, I started doing this stoner rock band called two headed beast. And, um, it was actually Phil as I was emailing Phil, Phil and Selma a lot, you know, he, him and like Todd were like the, the, one of the only two people that have been at, you know, the, the big people that I've known that, you know, big musicians, Todd Latore and Phil would always call or, message me just to see how I was doing. It really meant a lot, you know, cause I was, I was not doing shit. I was, you know, out of commission and, and Phil inspired me to, to find some local guys and, and do this stoner rock band because I kept telling him, I was like, dude, I want to do this 
the Stone Rock project, but with with the, with my metal style of vocals. He goes, well, "What's stopping you? Fucking do it!" And and so I did it, and oh man, it was so cool, so much fun. Did you ever know Chris Ackenhausen from Haven? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Uh, they move. He moved to Texas, and uh, he was <laughs> Pat's Harris ecstasy dealer. <laughs> yeah. they, were, they were high on totally high on ecstasy doing that kind of music i don't know how that works because it made me and my ex-wife was really nice when she did it <laughs> we were at the villa. i'm sure that, i'm sure they were doing just about everything other than probably ludes man ludes you know? in fact <laughs> the guy that he hooked up with on drum was mike tuttle which was a malice original original drummer when Jane went oh, to really? California the first time, yeah. I didn't know about that. And uh, the guitar player from Haven was a guitar player. But uh, So then then after that, you joined the guys from Disturb and uh, Dark well, no, Sky what, Choir? Or? Well, my buddy Fred Gorehow, he was an explorer. He had this project called Dark Sky Choir out of Jersey. And uh, the, what happened was their singer and their bass player had some problems, wasn't working out. So their manager told freddie to to you know let's replace him and so fred's go oh, i got i go i know the guy so he calls me up and goes, brian this is a good deal you know we got john moyer that's going to be playing bass with us because at that time disturbed was kind of on a hiatus they weren't really doing much and so you know john moyer was keeping busy like he played with jeff tate you know i think a few tours you know he was doing other, you know, other projects and stuff. So, and that's how I hooked up with uh, Moyer was through Fred. And, um, and so Fred Gorehow and, and Moyer, you know, would co-write songs together and we did a couple of records and did some touring with Queensryche and Fozzie and Monster Magnet it was fucking awesome. Yeah, and, then, and then Rona hit, Rona hit and kind of just fucked the band up. Kind of fucked it. Man, I well, turned 60. It, 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 it fucked our whole momentum. We had a really cool momentum. And then and then Moyer couldn't play with us anymore because Disturb came back. But uh, he was still writing and producing. So we got Percy, who was in Madam, who was in Madam Mayhem, to play bass with us to yeah. finish it out. COVID just messed everything up. I, that... Yeah. That June, that's when Dave Hathaway died. I got Bell's palsy. And uh, about the time I got better from that, I made like 900 videos because I wasn't working. And uh, then I had a stroke on December uh, 2021. I'll do anything to get out of going to my girlfriend's sisters for Christmas, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, always this you takes care of me. I go And my eyes went bad. My one eye went bad from a heat stroke that summer. I mean, I'm telling you, I turned 60. Heat, heat stroke did that? Yeah. It took the the one, one eye doesn't work. The other one started bleeding after the stroke. Mm-hmm. So I get shots in my eye, like a needle in my eye, man. So my, uh, but my doctor at the Casey Eye Institute, or I just love them. They have the best treatment I've ever got ever. Well, Elon Musk is coming up some cyborg stuff now. Maybe you should get one of those cyborg eyeballs. It'd be kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, was, it was on the news. Like, Musk is, like, fucking around with, like, cyborg shit. <laughs> you know? It sounds kind of interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so tired of talking to robots. <laughs> if yeah, I can, but, if if I can I see through the clothes. Bi- yeah, but to be the bionic man, I mean, remember... You know, Steve Austin and shit. I mean, I was I was blind. Shut up! Much. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Shut up! Shut the fuck up! I'm on the phone. <laughs> Fuckers! I, I was pretty much blind for the last year because this one bled. I think it was par- partly from the medicines, but uh, my blood so pressure better, right? Oh yeah, my blood pressure when I went to the ER the first time was two hundred eighty nine over one sixty nine. 
you're lucky to be alive, dude. That's <laughs> what, all these doctors came around. I said, wow, am I popular? And they go, no, we've never seen anybody alive that had blood pressure as high as you. I go, well, I want my picture on the wall. I like a trophy. And <laughs> a Dovis and Roses would be nice, too. <laughs> they said, if you walk out, how'd you get here? I said, my girlfriend dropped me off. She's parking the car. You walked in? I go, well, my legs work fine. I just talked like I'm drunk. <laughs> it kind of paralyzed my face. I couldn't use my right hand for a while, and uh, I could. I, I play bass and guitar every day just to get it going. It took about two months and it came back. That's uh, cool. Yeah, you know rehab. Every like when this eye went bad, I was with Kaiser with the uh, PCC. Well, we yeah. can't see you for nine months, and that's before Corona. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's a gun. I think I'm going to be an experiment after uh, I get this thing fixed up. Anyway, so you did the Dark Sky Choir and then uh, Trauma, the, which yep, was... And then, uh, trauma was uh, what happened was... And uh, tell me who tra- tra- Trauma, for people that don't know, was Cliff Burton's band before he joined Metallica. Yes. Yeah, it was Cliff Burton's band. Um, they did an album on Trapdoor Records. Mike yeah, Barney well, gave see- Technically, I think Cliff only did their demos. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't on and, it, but... And then right before they went off to do the shrapnel, the Scratch and Scream is when uh, pretty much Lars and uh, James fucking pirated um, <laughs> Cliff, you know? <laughs> Which, you know, they were, from what I was told, they, they were like, hey, dude, that's a cool opportunity. So, yeah, they were, they were really... Um, supportive about cliff moving on and whatnot was that a guy named mcgovney the bass player oh god dude okay i don't i don't know x gets a square (laughs) i don't either Uh, you probably know more than i do but i mean donnie donnie and chris were pretty much just the original members left so you're still a member in the band right actually officially yeah yeah. well yeah we just we're just taking a break no we're just having agent issues you know and we're not getting anywhere but i know that chris wants to write some new music and and whatnot so i don't know we're in the process of figuring something out and but, two two of my distributors uh cd baby they don't handle physical products anymore Really? They, they said, if you pay us to ship it to you, but Craig Montoya sent it to me on the slide and it was for free. Yeah. And so that was nice. He said, we'll destroy it for you. You know, they had a warehouse big enough to put a 747 in and it was filled with CDs and LPs. And he said, if you can pay for it or we'll destroy it for you for free. <laughs> well, fucking, well, what happened is I, I got a phone call from Juan or Tiaga who's, you know, did all of Vicious Rumors records, you know, engineered and, you know, helped produce and did Testament Machine Head. He, you know, Juan, everyone knows Juan. Juan calls me up and says, hey, Trauma's looking for a singer because, you know, Donnie passed away and because uh, he had uh, lung cancer and he died during Rona. So, unfortunately, Donnie couldn't, couldn't even have people at the, ho- at the hospital for him. It was horrible what happened to him. So, um, and I wasn't doing, nobody was doing anything. So I was like, well, fuck, yeah, I'll record the record. Why not? It's Rona and, you know, nothing to do. So, you know, I met with Joe Fralob and, and Steve and fucking Chris and, and Greg Christian was still in the band and recorded the record. And I, I think it was a great, great, it's a great album. I, I really like it a lot. So joining Mrs. Rumors really got you out of town and put you on the map, huh? No, you did. <laughs> <laughs> you did the scene. All I did was know somebody just like Dean. You know, Dean said, he said thank you to me in his interview. And it's like, you know, I hate to see great talent go to waste in Portland, no, Oregon. You, if, it, if it wasn't for you throwing my name, I mean, maybe somebody might have, but I don't know. I mean, who knows? I I, I definitely would not have. I would not have had what I have 10, 10 albums now. I wouldn't have any of that. If it wasn't for you, you know, helping me out. You know, people think you I'm know? full of shit and drop names and stuff, but like, like no, Jeff just I, didn't, I, 
Jeff didn't people think- say shit and I go, you guys don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Maddie, <laughs> Maddie fucking hooked, hooked a lot of us up, you know, cause that's what you, you you're like, uh, the master chess player, like, oh, this guy would fit here, or rook to C9, or whatever the fuck, you know. You know, when people <laughs> know me and they know me for a while and they go, you know, I thought you were full of shit before, but now I know you for a while. You couldn't make this stuff up. I go, I don't need to. I got a weird enough life. <laughs> hey, I got, no, I, mean, I got laid on the concert for when I was 15 in the Kiss concert by an older woman. She's 24. <laughs> <laughs> You worked a damage, so I guess I was right up her alley. <laughs> so, so, you know, after, uh, and then I don't know what happened between, because the Ronnie Monroe joined Vicious Rumors, and I don't know what the fuck transpired. You know, I kind of know some stuff, but I'm not at liberty to say, I should say. I don't want to overstep my boundaries. Long What's story the, short. Did, did long he story with short, Metal Church? Yeah. Yeah, he oh, yeah. did a few albums with Metal Church. And uh, long story short, I get a phone call from Jeff. It was like at three in the fucking morning. And Jeff never calls me <laughs> late. Generally, he'll text me or something. And I haven't talked to him in a while. I mean, I talked to Larry probably the most out of everybody and every now and then Gunner. But, you know, Jeff's, you know, busy dude. And so I'm like, it woke me up. And I'm like, what the fuck? I mean... It's got something, something's wrong, you know? So I answer the phone, I go, what's wrong? And he goes, ha, 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 he had kind of this nervous laughter. And I go, <laughs> yeah. seriously, I go, what's wrong, Jeff? And he goes, oh, well, uh, I, I need you. And I go, what do you mean you need me? And he goes, I need you to get on a plane. I need you to be here within less than 24 hours. <laughs> Where's here? And he goes, well, Germany. I was like, Ronnie's, <laughs> Ronnie didn't get on the plane. And I guess Gary St. Pierre was supposed to get on the fucking plane and do the whole Soldiers of the Night album. He didn't show up either. So both singers fucked him, you know, fucked up. It didn't, didn't help. Fuck Jeff up, I guess. I, for whatever the reason was, didn't get on the plane. And I'm like, Jeff, I haven't sang these songs in six fucking years. You know, I'm like, and he goes, oh, you, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You know, that's Jeff. He's always very optimistic. And, um, so I'm like, I'm like, all right, dude, I'll do it. I'll do it. Cause I love you guys. You're my brothers and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. So he, he fucking had to, sh- oh, man, he had to shell out so much fucking money. <laughs> and, um, so he, he fucking gets me a ticket. I'm on the plane. I feel like I'm cramming for an exam. You know, I feel like I'm in my senior year in high school, you know, cramming for the SATs and bullshit like that and or ASVAB test and all and I'm, so I'm cramming for this and and listening to songs and as soon as I get there I you know they pick me up from the airport I get to my hotel I'm still going over the songs I'm going over shit with Larry you know because Larry and I were rooming together which was nice because you know and Larry's like well don't worry about the, most of the soldiers of the night songs he goes I'm going to sing those and you just focus on mostly the Carl stuff and whatever you know from soldiers, then you sing it. I'm like, okay. So we pulled it off. We did it. And it was fucking magnificent. It was, it was like, you know, fucking an old girlfriend, you know, like somebody you haven't fucked in a while. It was, it was just like, it, like it was just, oh man, it's, it's like still it the same. It fits, you know, but it, it dude, felt good, you know, and that, and, that and music, that music is not easy, and I think I I, I hear the things. And I go, how do you remember all the stuff? Well, I'm right now. I'm I have to learn a few other Soldier of the Night songs because I have to do it uh, on the Raven tour. Apparently, Jeff advertised it as doing the whole Soldier of the Night in its That's entirety. What I read. So, yeah. So I'm not as familiar with that album. I, I know maybe five or six songs. But yeah, right now I'm cram I'm cramming again, trying to learn domestic bliss and blitz the world and other fucking songs. I'm like, fuck, you know. I mean, because the Carl stuff, you know, I could sling sing in my sleep. You Digital know, Digital Dictator. Uh, yeah, I mean that shit's fucking autopilot for me. Hey, speaking you know? of all this, you thank me for helping you, but you really got Gunner out of Portland too, and well, put him on the map. It was funny with Gunner as. Um, when when I was doing the two headed beast thing, and Brian Harrison calls me, it goes, "Hey Brian, you want to want to do this? Uh, 
I don't know if it was a some sort of charity. If it was pets for vets or it was some sort of charity that him and Maury were doing. And they got a bunch of, you know, musicians together, you know, all the, you know, all the somebodies and, and he, they pieced everybody together and we all did these like cover tunes. And so I hook up with Brian and there's this, Oh God, I can't remember the drummer's name and the bass player, but there's this little kid. Oh my God. I can't believe I forgot his name. It's been so long. But anyways, Gunner, it was two of the kids from school, the rock school of rock and Gunner was one of them. And these so these both these kids were playing guitars and Gunner at that time I think was like 15 or something yeah. like that and I always was fucking with uh, Daryl his dad is like dude one of these days I'm going to get your son I'm going to hook him up with a band you watch you know doing the whole Matt McCourt thing <laughs> and um and Ford and, and sure as shit we did we did like a Pantera song we did uh, God uh David Lee Roth song. We did a couple cool songs and it was, it was really fun. And, um, and that's kind of what helped me get back into the swing of doing this again. And that's when I got the phone call from dark sky, but then, uh, Jeff ran into a pickle where he lost one, one of the guitar players quit on him. Deal. And I was like, oh, I think it was Thane. There's been, there have been so many members in that band. So Boyd Brown, you, you no, probably, I think it was, no, I think Bobby quit. I think it was Bob Kapka. Oh, oh that's, what? yeah, that's right. Cause you got him in there too. And the yeah, I got player. Bobby. Yeah. I got Bobby in and, and then I got Thielen from Slovenia. What? See, I met him at a festival when he was just this little, this fucking young, skinny, long haired kid with stars in his eyes. I remember you had a couple guys from Portland, the, the bass player from Gunner's band that had a super long name. Yeah, I don't, I, that was Gunner got him in the band. I'm the glad with. to see y'all paint it forward because that's. Yeah, no, of course. You know, and, and, and then, um, when it's like I our, left, our army helped the other guys over the wall. Well, yeah. When, when I left, when I was with dark sky and, and, um, and vicious rumors at the same time. And, and then our, our, tours were colliding, but I was making so much money with that one band. I was like, fuck, you know, I, I, I got, I got to drop something. And, and then that's, and uh, so I talked to Nick Courtney, who's from Portland because he kept all, he's just like Gunner. Hey, help me out, man. If you find something. And I was like, and so I called Nick. And I was like, are you ready? I got it all for you. I got you all dialed in. I was like, all you got to do is produce. And you got the gig. If you kick ass and prove to Jeff and Larry, you got the gig. And uh, so I hooked him up with the guys. And but um, but it's funny, you know. We, you know, it, everything goes in full circle. And now I'm back with VR. And but the funny thing story I was going to tell you after I did that festival where I had like 24 hours to get over there. So it was just that show. Came back home as soon as I landed. Jeff calls me again, <laughs> and I'm like. And now this was supposed to just be a fill in. I didn't know it was going to be permanent. Well, apparently then Ronnie told Jeff that he, he's not going to do the Spain and uh, the Spanish festival and uh, Alcatraz festival in Belgium. He, he said, he's going to quit. He's like, I'm done. I'm not doing it. So as soon as I land, Jeff's like, Oh dude, I need you to come back. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, I was like, Oh my God, buddy. I was just there. You could have just, I, we could have just stayed, you know? And it is like an old know. girlfriend. And fuck, he didn't, he just didn't know, you know? I mean, it, it just, I felt so bad for Jeff. I swear to God, he lost so much money just flying me over there. Like the wet spot you know? didn't have time to drive before he called him back up. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> I felt so bad and he, and he, and he still paid me. Like he was paying me. I was like, dude, are you sure? Don't here, keep the money. And he's like, no, no, I want you to have it. Am I going, dude, you know, cause I felt bad. Cause no hooker logic money oh first. Oh my God, dude. He just, fuck. He got, he got hosed. Speaking of that, <laughs> when he said he made so much money, how much are we talking about? Oh, I'm not for a week. Say. I'm not going to say, I'll tell you in private. I ain't saying it online. <laughs> it was an, it was nice. They took care of me. Yeah. Cause they you know, some of these side well. guys tell me they make 400 a week with like bands that play arenas. Oh, it, it was, it was more than I was worth. I'll say that. 
two dogs. It, 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 <laughs> it was one of those situations. It was one of those unicorn gigs, you know, like once in a lifetime. And then, you know, when Freddie wasn't in the band anymore, I got Ira Black in it. And then, so then there's Ira and, and, you know, we got to work with John Moyer from Disturbed. So, I mean, who's Black Ira? Ira and, Black. He, he was in uh, Lizzie Borden, uh, Metal Church. I knew the name, yeah. You know, Ira, he's got like hair down to his ass. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, that guy. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, in Bull, he's in Bullet Boys now, and he, he's uh, done shit with I Am Morbid, and uh, he's been in so many fucking bands. Everyone knows Ira. Ira's like the, the, the you know, ambassador of Los Angeles. But, uh, yeah, yeah, Paul so, Gilbert lives in Portland now. Oh yeah, yeah. Man, so does uh, the bass player for uh, uh, Chuck not Buck Chuck Bear, Buck Cherry. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Mister Big is getting back together. Well, that would be cool. I mean, I always, I always thought that singer was fucking fantastic. I mean, Eric, a good singer. Kip, that yeah. was, Kip was his roommate. Yeah. Yeah, and like the keyboard player him. in Weir. But yeah, they used yeah, to live together. I met him a long time ago at the Starry Night. Well, oh. the Roseland. Yeah, I met him a long time ago. Um, like in, in 2000, uh, it, no, let's it see. Was, it, was, it was during their heyday. In About 94? They, yeah, they hired the Lick Sisters to do a... Um, like their little show that they did back in the day. Yeah, I met them, met them when Dean, we were at Robert Plant because our manager was Robert Plant's light guy and they were going to check out Dean as a drummer, Robert Plant. I knocked Robert Plant on his ass that night, that day. <laughs> I came across, yeah. I said, okay, where's uh, where's the, where's Ken Mendick? I'm looking for him while he's in the lunchroom. Just cut, cut across the stage and go down the stairs. And so I bashed into somebody that was behind one of these curtains and I uh, pulled pull the thing back. It's Robert Plant. And I looked down and I go, whoa, you're the dude. And you're pull, the dude. <laughs> I pull, pull him up and I go, and you're much taller than I expected, Mr. P. You're much taller than, than you are on TV. It's like from that movie being there. He goes, oh, Peter Sellers movie. You, are you a goon fan? I had no idea who the goon show was. So I just said, <laughs> yeah, he was real nice. Yeah. But... Uh, yeah, that at the Winger Mr. Big Show, it's the first time I met Paul Gilbert because he is going to be the first guitar player on that Mike Marty sent me for Dr. Mastermind. He's oh, really? Still, yeah, he's still living in uh, Pennsylvania. So Paul Gilbert was a shrapnel guitarist too? Oh, yeah, that's who found him. He was in the he's same. Everybody. Yeah, he was in the same uh, issue of Guitar Player as Ingve's demo. Oh, man, that's and, crazy. And so. I met him before the show, and you know, John, John Donnelly comes up again. Me and John, uh, it was my Angie and me, our uh, anniversary, and so John and me and her drank like two bottles of black velvet, and I got pretty drunk. She said, "Oh, oh my God, dude, God. how can you just stomach that?" Ugh. I'm not going anywhere with you. So I went. I got the five passes. Kip didn't show up because Paul. The keyboard player for Winger was his roommate, and he gave him five passes. And so I got them all. Mm -hmm. He was going to go to Seattle. I went there, and uh, I was just out. I was un, out of control. They threw me out five times. I was black <laughs> and blue. So after Mr. Yeah. Big was done, I go down the stairs because the the – Security knows me. I go downstairs, yeah. knock on the dressing room door, and I walk in. And I say stuff like, man, you guys need to start eating. You're so skinny. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I hear this knock on the door, and I go, I think my ride's here. And they pummeled the crap out of me, pulled me by my feet all the way out the, from the dressing room to the stairs, and up the stairs, boom, boom, boom. My head was hitting every one of the stairs. Was Edwards working then? No. John I, Edwards? I, nobody, nobody held me. It's Larry uh -huh. on the place. They tossed uh -huh. me in the dumpster with food. And uh, so I went around the corner and bought some heroin and ate that. And I was just fucking blotto. And uh, I, I got home. George tossed me out the, the front stairs when, when they were the real steep ones out the front door on sixth. 
I got home. I lived at the warehouse and I was purple. I looked like Barney, the dinosaur. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that story made it into a book called Tales from Hell. <laughs> Horror yeah. stories from the road. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty funny. It was, oh, yeah. That was a lot of, I quit drinking a, a month later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got a DUI. I drank five pints of vodka and decided to get a quart of beer for the chili. I didn't, and, I didn't yeah. start drinking until I was in my 30s. <laughs> yeah. Man, I'm, I, I'm kind of a late bloomer. No, yeah, it's better <laughs> that way. I, I don't drink at all now. I drink like one beer and that's enough. It was uh, never enough, but, uh, I got pulled over on the way to Safeway in Hawthorne and driving home, they're waiting for me and I, the cops. And I got out and I go, well, they go, it smells like a brewery. I go, well, actually it smells more like a, a distillery. I drank a little vodka today. And uh, <laughs> I just got an probation from stealing my paycheck for when I lived at the villa. <laughs> it was just life was hell then so they took Jesus. me in and had me walk the line again and at the cop shop in 42nd and so there's a line on the uh, ground and so I start talking like Howard Cosell <laughs> Olga, yeah. Olga Corbett back on the bounce beam she's gained a little weight since the last games <laughs> <laughs> and the cops were all laughing and I yeah. get done. I blow 2.0. And then I said, hey, well, we're not going to keep you. You're, you're not going to hurt anybody. <laughs> I go, okay. <laughs> but you, I was, you, I've got a long walk home. I, you took my car, my last quart of beer, the money I spent on that, trying to get a ride home. And one guy said, no. And one cop that was laughing so hard said, I'll take you. <laughs> so where do you live? I go, I just live on 8th and Hawthorne. 8th and Hawthorne? 8th and, oh, the place that has the parties? Yeah, that's it. I live there. Oh, I know where that is. We go there and look at the girls at late at night. They all came down that's from the so pink purple afterwards. funny. Yeah. yeah. Cops are like that anymore, man. They don't, they don't, don't fucking arrest your ass. For, well, they did arrest me, but I, I figured. No, man, I mean, yeah, but they'll, they'll give you a Dewey, man. There's no way to get well, out. I, of I got one. And yeah. uh, then they just they just didn't throw you in the in the clinker. No, they they probably figured. No, you're not. He's told me you're not going to hurt anybody. You're done. I, I, you know, when Ugh. when a guy sh shows up with clocks and can call fifty people to have more than that, you lost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do what you want. Just don't shoot me like a black guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping that this tour. Will be good, you know. I, I mean, Larry talks to I think it's John or the drummer. Who, who's, who's that's not John? That's the guitar no, player, right? It's Fear Factory's drummer, Mike Heller. Yeah, he talks to him all the time. That's what Larry says. Oh he man, talks to him. The album, the the newest album, All Hell's Breaking Loose. Their last album, one was great, but this one. Oh, he's a he's a fucking drum, beast. Oh yeah, I told Dean, I go Fear Factory's drummer's playing with Brave, and he goes, Oh man. That, that stuff's radical. Dude, I'm so happy that Dean is back in fucking Journey. Yeah, man. I, I, I had the honor to play with him once, one one time, uh, when, uh, back in the Fall from Grace, after they, they stopped Repellent. playing together. Uh, yeah, we went over, I think that's what it was. It was the bass player from Fall from Grace and James, and then it, um, it, we went over to God. I can't remember the Paris Theater. Uh, no, we we just play. We were just practicing it oh. over. I don't remember whose house it was. If it was Dean's or oh fuck, man, Damien. There was a no. guitar that, that was it in Salem. Something like that. Um, it's been so long. Uh, you know, Dean's Dean's like my little brother. I love the guy. Yeah. And he was my bed partner on the road. So I, I said, I can tell I've, I've slept with Dean Castronovo. Yeah. <laughs> and he sleeps like a sandwich in a Campbell's soup ad. It's diagonally. <laughs> so if you're a midget, you fit, but it's not. 
<laughs> he hogs the bed and his feet doesn't, they don't stop moving. When I first met him, he slept in my house. There's this, 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 the bed next to me. And I woke up about six and I rolled over and I saw his feet moving like, uh, you know, he was playing drums. And I go, hey, are you awake? And no, he was asleep. He plays drums in his sleep. I think it was, Do- I think it was Dominic's house. That's the guy's name I'm thinking of. Yeah. Um, I think, I think it was Dominic's. I don't it's think it was plan. Dean's house. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, yeah. Dean tried to stay away from home as much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I got, but I got to play with him and he's like, Oh man, you're a good singer. But it just, it made me feel good. It was like, Oh, Dean said that's good. You know, but I only met him that really that one time he wouldn't oh. know me from, from Adam anyways. Sure. He but, would um, I mentioned your name and he acts like he knew you. But you know, the thing is with Dean, I would turn around and watch him and forget to sing. <laughs> See, that's a good dude, trick. If you forget I, the words, I, just turn around and watch the drummer. Dude, he is so Larry. amazing. His voice. I mean, he's better than their 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 singer. Yeah, he did. He sang the set a few times. He said, but he yeah, said, but I mean, when he sings like mother. father, he sounds just like Steve it. Perry. Yeah, I mean, he really. God, he just. He fucking nails it, dude. I mean, you well, know. You, you know what the guys in Wild Dog said when I first brought him over? I said, well, I got this guy. Go, we'll bring him over. So G- Jamie St. James drum sets over there, just totally pristine. and hadn't been, not a dent on the heads. In and five he comes song, over there and fucks it up. <laughs> in five songs. <laughs> <laughs> he broke the heads. And he broke the kick drum pedal footboard in half when he punched through the kick drum. You broke he's, the kick drum, the foot pedal in half. The thing you put your foot on. He's a fucking monster, you dude. Destroy the snare, ruin all the heads there on the drum set, cracked two cymbals, and broke all of Jamie's drum sets. And go, ah, I gotta go, man. <laughs> I remember when you guys, you guys did some crazy uh, wild dogs. You guys did some crazy show. And Dane and Donnelly, uh, <laughs> they, what they dr- dumped a 33 gallon fucking garbage can over Dean's head. Yeah. And he was still fucking playing and shit. And Dane and, in oh, a dress. Oh my God. It was so fucking funny. Yeah. But, dude, that concert was amazing. They got did me. You so- still, did you, you still have that video, don't you? Yeah. Oh, and, dude, that was fucking genius shit. And they did Rainer's Hair with Al Seahorn first, and then we did all the records, rest of the stuff. I tried to make it like a Tubes show. and um, it, was, I, it was fucking... That, that was so long ago. It was so funny, but I Dane and Donnelly, with, they were yeah. so fucked up. <laughs> Dane, yeah, they got me... They got me Yeagered up. You were fucking on fire dude it was yeah. it was hilarious i poked a guy in the chest because was wearing waving an american flag that was on a ski pole uh-huh. some guy got freaked out so i started poking him with it and so the cops came after the gig and <laughs> i left dude, you were like you were like like gg allen that night you were just going crazy <laughs> I mean, I mean, fucking absolutely. Lance and I were just like, oh my fucking God, you know, because both him and I were up in the in the upper level of Starry Night. And and we're like, we see Dane and Donnelly doing something back. What the fuck are they doing? And then they just, they just dumped the fucking garbage can on Dean and he didn't even miss a beat. He's like, They're fuck like you guys. Oh, yeah. And uh, later on, I kind of hooked up Dane uh, for a cult connection with Dean and he would go on tour with Journey. Yeah. And uh, bring him bring him the go-go powder. But uh, uh, yeah, John Donnelly and Dean were the backup sequence. He, Dean, Dean in a dress and John in a suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a reason they didn't want me to be the singer. <laughs> uh. And half the reason was because I like to. Those are good times, though. They were a little too uptight for me. I I miss those guys. I wish they were still here. Yeah. John was like. And and Dane, I mean, God, I was so happy Dane was starting to do music again. And and it was some fucking badass shit, you know, Hillbilly Bitch Splitter. Yeah. And the name was just hilarious. I was like, Timmy, that is just the funniest fucking name. And, um, what kind of cancer did he die from? 
he had liver cancer wow. and, and it, and it was, um, we were playing a show with, uh, it was two headed beast, I think and hillbilly bitch splitter at the Hawthorne. And, um, and I saw Dane sitting in the booth, you know, in the, where the bar is. And he just, you know, he's doing one of these things and, and, um, and he just didn't look like Dane. He didn't seem like himself. And I'm like, Hey, you all right, buddy? He goes, oh, I'm, I'm pretty fucked up. I'm like, you sick? What do you, what do you want? Some tea or something? He goes, and then he just goes, I have cancer. You know, just, just blurted it out. I'm like, no. And he goes, yeah, dude. He goes, it's terminal. And he says, yeah, I'm not going to make it. But he says, I'm still going to try to fight it. But, and he was just like, I don't think I'm going to make it, man. You called and me I, from the hospital with him. And who me? Yeah, I was yeah. at work. I yeah, was well, back there by the, Jim, the back Jimmy of was just, building three. Jimmy was freaking the fuck out. She was just, and I mean, she she was just freaking. You know, I mean, she she got she she would get mad and upset, and, and you know, and so I, I was there trying to you know help calm her down. And even Dane goes before Dane couldn't stop. You know, couldn't couldn't talk anymore. He was just like, man, keep an eye on Timmy for me. Keep an eye on her. I'm like, I will, dude. And and um, but yeah, it, 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 when he told me, I mean, I it took everything I could to not start fucking crying, man. I was like, no, because the first time I met him was at the fucking uh, that one place where everyone partied over right by Stassi's the space. Oh yeah. For the wheelchair Jerry's place. Yeah. Jerry's place. Back when cement was playing, this is, you know, whoever's watching this is, we're talking Portland metal scene back in the day and Arnold, you know, from recreation, he was there. Fuck. So many people has died. He's dead now. Uh, I've got and, 227 that I've counted. And, and fucking. So, and I go walking in and I was wearing my silver Fox hat and Dane just started Busting my balls like right off the bat. Who the fuck brought Davy Crockett in here? <laughs> just, you know, just fucking with me. It's like, oh, I see you got some fire in your ass. Uh, you know, I didn't know him from Adam. I was just getting. I was back when I was doing Bloodstone with with Lance and Ben. I think that that's when we were all recording the Gigi Allen tribute album, and we recorded at that studio that was well, in that building. It makes sense. You know, Ken Goldstein you. played on on mine. My track. <laughs> well, Kenny's like one of the best bass players I've ever played with. He's fucking, he's amazing. But yeah, it was that's where I met Dane back in the day. So, and then we just became friends. You know. Yeah, I went to school. I, with I, I was I was the new kid on the block. You know, because there was Arnold. And Joe, Joe Toff was the one who got me into the Portland scene. It was from cement because him and Paul Ader came out to my practice place when I was playing with Jeff Hamilton and Nate Potter and Mikey Tyndall. This was, and they're like, dude, Joe's like, fuck this, man. You need to come into Portland and meet some of my peeps. And, and Joe just fell in love with me. And so, and, and then he hooked me up with Lance and that's how I became friends with Lance. So Joe Toth was the one who actually plucked me where eventually where I met you. And it's funny how, how everything kind of lines up. It's a small town. Well, yes and no. It's, it's just funny how everything aligned, you know? Well, I mean, and, and you then, know. And Paul Ader, he was such a sweetheart. Uh, he, he just, I haven't talked to him forever. I talk to Danny Carbo every now and then, but, um, and it sucks that Joey's not around. We lost Joey, fucking one of the most amazing guitar players that and nobody ever got to hear, but I still have, Rob I still Rocks. have, I still have, uh, um, his album. I still have Joey's record on my phone. I, I listen to it anytime. And I'm like, you guys want to hear a fucking badass motherfucker? Here you go. Joey he, Lamello. He can play anything. He can play anything. Yeah. He was just. I used to see him with Rex and the Rockets. Yeah. We called him Jukebox Joey. Yeah. Because he can play. He can listen to anything. He was, he was insane. His father, Joey Lamello Sr. was a, 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 I don't know, lounge musician or, or guitar player. He, he's somewhat in well, Vegas. well known in Vegas. Yeah. And Joey, when, when he lived with me, 
Joey would tell me about shit when his dad would get mad at him and he, he would punish Joey. He would send him to his room and he couldn't come out until he learned Al Di Miola records. Like he had to play Al Di, Di Miola, you know, perfectly. Otherwise he couldn't come out. His dad was a total fucking prick. Yeah, you Italian know. guy, man. You know, Italian yeah, dad. Yeah, fucking fuck Joey up, man. That's why Joey was such a horrible drinker, and he he did not have a very good upbringing. You know, his, his like father your, your, cunt. your roommate Rob. Yeah, he, Robbie. Mm-hmm. He died too, man. I'm just. I up, know. Yeah, like, both. Yeah. Bo- yeah, both. It was funny. I had Rob Krug and Joey Lamello <laughs> living at my house in Beaverton. <laughs> Back yeah. when Jay, Jay was working at Power Records, Jay Reynolds. With the and snakes. Yeah, I had yeah, I had a like a shit ton of venomous snakes, you know, because I, I had a reptile business. And um, well, yeah, it was funny having Rob Krug and Joey. Well, both of them wanted to they, they lived with me because they were trying to get clean. And they knew, you know, I didn't put up with any of that shit. I didn't allow any type of drugs or anything like that in my house. Otherwise, I'd choose some motherfucker. And um, and it was funny because uh, Rob, I guess, owed some people some money. And and Rob's like, dude, these guys, they're gonna, they know where I live. They're going to come in. They're going to come over here. And uh, I was like, well, they can come over here. I'll fucking put a cap in their ass. And, and he goes, dude, you don't want to fuck these guys. And, and they sure shit. They pulled up in our neighborhood. And there's in their car. I go, I go walking right out there with my 45. And I was. I pointed it right at him. Like, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of my property. You show up in here. I'm going to fucking kill you. And Rob's like, dude. And they just, they took off. They sped away. They left. Never came back. But I was like psycho back then, dude. I was like just a a nutbag. Like I, I, I lived to get in fights. You know, I was all about wanting to get in fights. See see what happens when you grow your hair out. So you get mellow. (laughs) Well, I think it was now he's having children, you know. I mean, I still have that craziness in me, you know. I mean, I got a sign in my window that says, we don't dial 911. <laughs> and this guy, <laughs> holy guy. But, but no, but Robbie and um, Joey, they, they just, they, they came over, you know, because they wanted to get clean. And, and so, because they were struggling with those demons forever. You know, it's just sad, you know, it, it it's sad. It sucks. Uh, I think getting a DUI in 1989, it was the best thing that happened to me. I started going to yeah. AA meetings the, the day, the, next, the very next day, and uh, it changed my life. It it, it kind of ruined me for rock and roll, but I'm still here. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, there I of the 227 people, 17 people died of overdose. Like John Donnelly got out of jail. Yeah, yeah, I. I'll, because I, like you were you were at the funeral too, right? Cause oh yeah. I, went, I, yeah, yeah. Cause I remember you there because I was there. And Tom um, Cookman would not. He still is <laughs> bummed out about that. Yeah, his and I remember his brother. You know. Yeah, in the give, robe, given give the eulogy or whatever. When he was wearing that weird, uh, like a what was that? Uh, some uh, Rajneeshi uh, type no, outfit? Or no, some like, shit a, like, that? Um, like a like a you know monk monk robe. robe. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, he, li- he lived in Israel, and he was a Christian. Um, what do you call it when you go someplace here? A Christian? Oh, missionary. Missionary in Israel. Mm-hmm. He said the Israeli police would always pull him in and question him because. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Maddie. Well, I'm glad you're doing better, dude. And Thanks, love man. Ya. And and. You know, so when things don't go right when I'm on tour, I, I'm I'm secretly cursing your name. Fucking Matt. Fucking Matt. Just blame it on Why me. You... <laughs> Should uh, never I... gave my name out. <laughs> I'll never know. Yeah. So All right, buddy. Okay. I'll talk to you later. All right, later, dude. Bye. Ciao. Huh. That was Brian Allen from Business Rumors, and they're going on tour with Raven and Wicked, and uh, it's going to be a great tour. And uh, I haven't talked to him for a while. I'm so glad he's doing great. And uh, oh, I better eat some. Oh, I'm just bones, not skin and bones. I'm just bones, bones. It's all about bones. So this is tell me all about it. 
or tell me about it. That's the uh, actual title of the show. And I uh, will see you next time with another fabulous guest. And I thank you for watching. Thank you. Good night. Thank <laughs> you.